Hey everybody, and welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. I'm Dennis Fields. Today, we're doing a brown ale, and we're gonna experiment a little bit. I'm trying a different yeast that I've never tried before, and a recipe that I've never made before. So it could be good, it could be bad, but you're coming along for the ride. So hit that like and subscribe button, grab yourself a beer, and let's get after it. So this time of year, I really like a brown ale or some type of amber ale even, or even sometimes a red ale. But a good uh, kind of nut brown ale I made a few years ago really reminded me that, you know, I haven't made a brown ale in a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and make one of those. And like most of you, you know, I kind of look for different recipes online and then I kind of change them, right? That's kind of a good way to start. Find a good recipe that you like online, whether it's just something that someone else has put out there off of, you know, brewer's friend or brew father or whatever, and then, you know, uh, change it a little bit, you know, keep the base malts if you want or change the yeast or, you know, add something to it. That's generally what I do for most of my beers where I haven't, where I'm trying to experiment, right? Take something, don't necessarily mimic something uh, because I know I can do that, but then change it and see if you can make it better. So in this case, I don't use a lot of different German style ales or Kolsch yeasts or something like that. So what I decided to do this time is I took a uh, brown ale recipe, which I think is gonna end up being pretty good. It uses uh, Pilsner malt, it uses a pound of Victory, a pound of Munich 10L, and a pound of Crystal 120L. It also has a half pound of chocolate and about a three quarters of a pound or so of flaked oats. And I'm gonna use some rice hull so we don't get a stuck sparge, but that's basically the grain Bill. And then I was looking for kind of a German ale and I came across a yeast from Omega called Kolsch 2. And although we're not going to be um, making a Kolsch beer, this is a uh, lager-esque or lager-like style ale yeast that is uh, similar to a German ale style yeast. And so I've really had good success with Omega yeast. So I decided to that I was gonna make a starter of this thing, put it on the stir plate, we're gonna give it a go. Um, we're gonna actually ferment this a little bit lower than the recommended temperature on this, so it does have that kind of lager-esque, but I don't want it to be truly lager-lager, right? A brown ale is still an ale, but I want it to be on the colder side so it doesn't give any uh, fruitier or any type of other esters in there. But this is a clean style yeast anyway, so the package recommends somewhere between 65 and 69 to ferment. I'm probably gonna uh, keep it about 63, 64. So just under that range to keep it on the colder side. But then I'll ramp it up towards the end to make sure that it clean, finishes clean uh, and then we'll go from there. So here is the uh, one liter starter that I made. I have not yet decanted off the liquid. I've just cold crashed it into my refrigerator. I'm gonna decant off all the spec beer on the top and then we're gonna mix this up, let it warm up as we are brewing today. But I'm gonna go ahead and get all my grains milled. I'm gonna start with uh, my water and water additions that I'm about to prepare. And then we're gonna get right into the mash after this. All right, our water is heated up and we're gonna go ahead and mash in. We're trying to hit a mash temperature of 152. Since we are using flaked oats with this recipe, I did add a bunch of rice hulls in here. So um, if you are prone to getting stuck sparges or uh, any really time I add, you know, flaked oats or rye or some other type of uh, flaked adjunct, I like to add rice hulls because it, you can get stuck sparges fairly easy depending on how sticky things get. So hazy IPAs, um, you know, porters that have, you know, oats or other adjuncts that end up getting really gummy, I add those rice hulls in there. So always a good idea to do that. Um, make sure we're getting all those dough balls out. For some reason, I had quite a few of them today. And then we will check and see where our mash temperature is at, which again, we're shooting for 152. Let's see where we're at.
rather be a little on the high side than the low side and I did let my water heat up a smidge more so it's at about 155 right now which I'm going to keep stirring it make sure all those dough balls are really good and mixed in um, I thought the um, cooler was a little cooler than it was no pun intended uh, but I thought that that would add a little bit of or take away a little bit of the heat and it did not today so it must have been a little warmer than I thought um, but I always err on that and especially in the winter months when I'm brewing in the winter months, making sure that this, either the mash tun is heated up or um, go a few extra degrees on your, on your water just to account for your mash tun being cold. Especially if you brew outside or leave it outside, um, that makes a huge difference. So we're gonna stir this just a few more minutes here and then right as it hits about 154, I'm gonna put the lid on it. And it will drop a couple degrees, but I'm okay with it being a little high. I don't really want it to be super, super high. And so um, as long as we can get it in the 154 range, worst case too, if you are high, you can always add an ice cube in this. So I haven't done that yet, but if I need to, I can always do that. All right, 154 even-ish. So it's almost 153 range. I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, lid on this thing and then we're gonna let it rest for 60 minutes. All right, while our mash is in here doing its thing for an hour, we're gonna go ahead and get our strike water, or our sparge water ready. I'm gonna put those water additions in there, and in a little while, we'll get that starting to heat up as we're about halfway through the mash. Then we are going to be measuring out our hops to get those ready. In this case, uh, this beer is only gonna have an ounce of Chinook at 60 minutes for the bittering hops. So we're gonna go ahead and portion those out now. All right, it has been an hour. We're gonna go ahead and give this a good stir around, do our recirculation and Vorloffing process, and then get our batch sparge water in here. I use a kind of a recirculation tool that I made. If you haven't watched that video, go check that out. It's called a DIY recirculation tool, I believe. And I'll have that video in the uh, video or the link in the video description below so you can check that out if this is a process you do it saves you some time so you don't have to sit there and pour the runnings back uh, very slowly into the um, mash tun this just recirculation tool will just allow it to slowly go back uh, into the uh, without disturbing the grain bed uh, back into your mash tun so you basically fill up one of these pitchers here um, and then you'll dump it into this one. It hits a little screen on the bottom and then it will disperse your wart so it doesn't create any holes through your grain bed. Helps set that grain bed and make a clear wart at the end of the day. So we do this about, um, these are uh, gallon pitchers. I probably do this uh, three or four times before I put it right into my kettle. So we've got that filled up. We're gonna go ahead and dump that in here. That's gonna again slowly disperse back into the mash tun so it doesn't disrupt the grains and allow me to keep filling this thing back up. Once you have done that recirculation a few times, you can go ahead and just start draining right into your kettle. We're expecting to get about 2.5 gallons for our first runnings. All right, that last little bit is draining in there and it looks like we're right about two and a half gallons right on the money. So we're gonna go ahead and close our valve off. We're gonna dump in our sparge water and then we are going to let that sit for 10 minutes. So because I only use one kettle, I uh, put that sparge water in a separate Rubbermaid cooler. I just heat it up a little bit more to about 180 degrees. That way when it gets in here, it's over 170. All right, dump that guy in there. Going to give the grains another real good stir up and then we are going to let this sit for 10 minutes this is going to help soak off any of the other sugars from those grains all right batch sparge rest is done we're going to do the same Vorloff process and get our final runnings
All right, so we've done that three times. We're gonna go ahead and get our final runnings now. Now that uh, uh, hose is going right into our kettle, we should be ending about 7.2 gallons total for our final runnings. Once we get to that level, even if there's a little bit of liquid left in our, our mash tun, it should, should be close. But even if there's a little bit left, we're gonna shut that off. It's not gonna change our efficiency or anything else. We're gonna go ahead and get the, our kettle going and start our boil process. All right, we have our boil going. Um, don't forget to give it a good stir around and take a little sample if you want to do a uh, pre-boil gravity hydrometer or refractometer reading. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And then I also, before it boils, add a little bit of firm cap S into the boil, just to, like about a teaspoon or so. This is gonna help prevent boil overs. I'm also gonna add my hop spider into there as well, just a mesh screen. I use this one when I have uh, you know one or two ounces of hops. Other than that, I use my DIY hop spider. You can check that out on my page, which is the mesh bag that goes inside of a, uh, a PVC uh, container. And then uh, you can drop up to like 10 ounces of hops in that thing, it's never gonna clog. All right, we are approaching a rapid boil here. So we're gonna keep a good eye on it here. Uh, I've been stirring it a little bit as it's been getting closer. And then we're gonna get ready to pitch our one ounce of hops here shortly, but we're gonna make sure we don't get any boil over first. Turn the burner down just a little bit to kind of sustain that boil. Yeah, the firm cap's really doing its job. So the, the firm cap's job is to basically dissipate and uh, disperse or break apart these bubbles faster, basically. And so um, it's wanting to boil over right now. It just can't because the uh, bubbles break too fast. So again, we'll turn it down just a little bit, a little bit more. And here we go. Mmm. Chinook cops are the, one of my favorites. One ounce going in. And then we let her go for 60 minutes. And now that you have over an hour to wait, you sit there and contemplate life's many, many deep questions. Like, why is it that you brew such delicious beer? Well, it's probably because you watch and subscribe to Cityscape Brewing. I mean, obviously. Also, cheers, this beer is good. And really, did I seriously brew all of these beers? Holy crap. You look at your watch once more, and you realize it's only been five minutes and you still have 55 minutes to go. You think, where did he get that cool shirt? Is there other swag like stickers and hats? Yeah check out the Cityscape Brew Store on my YouTube homepage. All right, so our beer is done. We're gonna go ahead and get our wort chiller and start cooling this thing down. All right, we're all cooled down. It's under 80 degrees. Once it drops below that, the transferring process and that kind of stuff helps cool it down too. My carboy's cold and I like to cool it down the rest of the way in my um, fermentation chamber, um, but that's up to you. You can continue cooling it if you want to. It's nearly 70 actually. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this. And the uh, strainer that I use here does kind of two things. Helps aerate the beer and catches any particles, any hops matter that kind of fell through the, the screen, uh, but mostly to aerate the beer. All right, as you can see, we are really nice and aerated and we got to do a couple things here quick. First and foremost, get this thing off there. And then we're going to take a uh, quick sample for our refractometer. We're going to go ahead and throw my tilt hydrometer in there, which has already been sanitized. If you haven't checked that video out on the tilt hydrometer, go check that out. It's an awesome, awesome thing and the customer service is second to none. All 
right, this thing is sitting at about 72 degrees, which is probably perfect to pitch the yeast. It, I don't mind it being in a very slightly warmer environment than what we're going to ferment at, which is lower 60s. This will kind of give the yeast a little head start before it cools down the rest of the way. So um, make sure that while you're uh, after you decant a bit, you go through and you stir this thing around and really look at the bottom of your uh, of your yeast. Make sure there's no yeast cake uh, on the bottom. This one took a little while to really shake up and get it off the bottom. And so every time I'd walk past it, I'd give it a little swirl like this and just make sure it's uh, not settling again. So make sure it's all in suspension and then go ahead and pitch your yeast. All right, guys, and last but not least, let's take our hydrometer reading. Let's see where we are at. Couple drops on there. Looks like we were supposed to be at original gravity of 1060 or so. That's based on 75% brew house efficiency. If you're anywhere between 70 and 75, it's between 1056 and 1060. So let's see where we're at. It looks like we are going to be at smack dab right in the middle of that, probably at about 1058, I would say. So 1058, I'm very happy with that. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna let this thing ferment. We're gonna go and transfer to a secondary. Again, there's no dry hopping in this one. We're gonna keg it after that, and then I'm gonna be back for a tasting. This is a grain to glass video. I wanna show you guys how this turned out. This is a yeast I've never used before. This is a uh, recipe I've never used before. It could turn out fantastic and be a go-to of mine for the coming years, or it could fall on its face. If you've been brewing long enough, you've brewed some good beers and you've definitely brewed some bad beers. And so we're gonna find out how this one shakes out. See you in a couple of weeks. All right, the moment has come. So we have finished our brown ale. We just poured the very first pint. We're about to give her a taste test. This is the first time I will actually be trying this other than sample it out of the hydrometer tube uh, that I was taking. Um, just to, before we get started here, I just wanted to let you know that it did end a little bit under our expected final gravity, which was supposed to be 1.015. It ended up at 1012 or 1.012. Totally okay with that. It's just a little bit higher ABV than normal. It was expected to be 5.9, now it's 6.0 or almost 6.1. Not a huge deal at all. So um, don't be worried if that happens. Um, it just means your yeast did a really good job cleaning up the beer. Um, I did transfer this into a secondary. I let that sit for an additional week and then I transferred into a keg and carved it up. So uh, first things first, uh, right, all, right off the bat, I wasn't expecting this beer to be like super, super clear. We did use flaked oats, which will give it a little bit of a hazy appearance in it, but some brown ales aren't supposed to be uh, real clear anyway. But when I had it in the actual test tube, it did uh, for my hydrometer reading, it did actually uh, look and appear fairly clear, but as you get it in a full pint glass, uh, it, it does have a little bit more cloudier appearance because of that uh, flaked oats mainly, right? And so uh, it's keeping pr fairly good head retention. It's kind of got a rockier head on it. Um, it's sticking to the glass real well, even as it's kind of dissipating since I poured it a few minutes ago. Um, and so far, appearance wise and, and head wise, it looks very, very nice. So let's go ahead and give her a sniff. And you can smell those like chocolatey and Munich malt notes that we used in this. Again, we used uh, some flaked oats. That's not gonna give very much aroma, but that chocolatey, Almost smells like you're almost smelling kind of like a porter or you know another darker beer so kind of kind of two style again not uh hoppy it, it has one ounce of chinook at 60 minutes and that was all we used for that so very good probably what you'd expect for aroma so go ahead and give it a taste that's a really good beer honestly i uh, you don't really know until you have it carved up and cold. And so in the uh, tubes again for the hydrometer reading, you know, I could taste uh, the cold yeast a little bit and um, man, that plays very well with this style. I mean, 
if you didn't do it with the chocolate notes and, and probably some of the Munich, um, I think you could pick out the Kolsch a little bit. But man, I, I tell you that the Kolsch yeast in this style, I've never done a brown ale. I've always used a clean um, ale yeast for a, a brown ale. Uh, I did a nut brown uh, a few years back and this is really good. Um, this Omega yeast isn't there. It's the Kolsch 2, which is the Y-O-L-0-4-4. So it's a little bit different than their typical Kolsch 1 yeast, which I would say uh, is more for that Kolsch style. So this is a little bit different, and I think it plays really well with other beer styles, in this case, the Brown Ale. So um, I'm very happy with it. I think it turned out really, really well. Um, happy with the appearance, happy with the flavor. This is a great winter beer that you should definitely try. Uh, going into this, I mentioned that I didn't know what to expect. This was a recipe that I kind of had found online and kind of tweaked a few things. And that's generally what I do when I'm trying new different beer styles or recipes that I haven't done before is I kind of see what others do. And then I kind of play around with it. I don't really try and necessarily exactly mimic because they may put something on, you know, Brewer's Friend or, uh, you know, Homebrew Talk or something like that. And they may be like, oh, this is a fantastic beer. But if you make it, you're like, Oh, that's their version of fantastic. Is it yours? That type of thing. So I like to play around with the recipes, find one that I think will be pretty good and then kind of play around with it, change some stuff. And so um, definitely happy with this beer. I could drink this all night long. This is a good uh, ale, uh, brown, but still dark, not real hoppy, a uh, good winter, sit around the campfire or around the fireplace inside and have a beer. So if you have any questions uh, about how this turned out or about any of the process, feel free to leave any comments below uh, the video description. Happy to help out. Also, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Happy brewing and cheers. Thanks for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. And another couple ways that you can help support the channel is by hitting that like and subscribe button. You can also check out the merchandise in our store. I have other shirts. We got glassware, we got stickers, hats, sweatshirts, etc. Go check it out. Also, hit that video here, you know you want to.